five levels of prosperity. I talked about spiritual. I talked about what spiritual prosperity, mental prosperity, bodily prosperity, financial, then social prosperity. Good. Then I moved on to talk about the power that makes wealth. What the scripture really talked about, the power that makes wealth. I said God gives us the power to get wealth. He didn't give us wealth. So what God gives is what? What God gives is what? He gives the power to make wealth. So that power, I said, is the word ability. So there are abilities God has given to you that can be translated into what? Into wealth. And I said, number one, ability God has. The word power to make wealth, number one, it means was the ability to take right steps and right when you can take When you can take right steps and right decision, then at the right time, right steps at, and right decision, you know, every step starts from what? Decision. So ability to take the right decision, the right step at the right time. That's what God has given to you. Number two is what? Ability to market your talent into product. Your talent cannot produce money if you don't make it marketable or if there is no conversion process and number three i talked about what ability to invent or improvise there are things that has been you know that things you might you might need to pioneer you need to start you understand what i'm saying so that so 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 there are things that you might need to i said So, so there are inventions, things you pioneer, and there are things you can improvise or improve on. Somebody has done something, then you are taking up from where the person, you know, maybe you are a retailer or a wholesale, you know, you are, you are just working on something that has been done. And I talked about number four, ability to what maximize quality relationship that you can maximize relationship to make wealth like Laban and Jacob remember the Bible says God blessed Laban because of who? Jacob another scripture says God blessed Lot because of Abraham so if you maximize some relationships around you it can do that and finally ability to so so I spoke about so many things but let me show you let's let's go to I saw something in Deuteronomy chapter 8 verse 17 and let me just show you briefly before we start Deuteronomy chapter 8 you know our focus most of the time if you hear people teach about this we talk more I need scripture on the screen please we talk more about verse 18 I need somebody that can be very fast please Deuteronomy we really talk more about verse 18 but verse 18 starts from verse 17 so most of the time we focus on verse 18 but I want us to look at verse 17 can we read verse 17 together? One, two, three, go. And thou said in thy heart, what? My power and my might has gotten me this wealth. That's where it started from. He was talking about the children of Israel. After they have left the, the Red Sea and all those things, they've gotten the victory. They've gotten to Canaan. Then those guys got to a point. Never get to a point in your life that you will feel that your result is by your making. That's a dangerous zone to find yourself in life. Whatever achievement, whatever possession, whatever ability, never get to a point in your life that you will feel is by your power and your might. Remember Zechariah chapter 4, verse 6. He said, not by power, not by might, but by what? By the spirit. So go back to that Deuteronomy. So he said, they said in their heart, they said in their heart that what? That my power and my might of my hand. Never, everything shouldn't be mine. Bible says, if the Lord does not build the house, those who built labor in vain, if the Lord does not watch over the city, the watchmen, just do what? They watch in vain. I think that's Psalm 126 verse 1. So don't get to such a point that you feel. So a student can write an exam, and after the exam, maybe pass excellently then he can ascribe that success to days or nights of studying, reading, laboring. Don't get trapped. That was one of the problems 
or the challenges Nebuchadnezzar had. He looked at his kingdom. He looked at loyalty. He looked at his palace and he said, all oh, glory to me. And God said, I will show you that there is someone behind this scene. You must understand that there is someone behind this scene. You must know that there is someone behind your success story. Are we together? And God said, okay, I'm going to teach you a lesson for seven years. And he sent him to where? He sent him to a training school. And he became an animal for seven. When he returned, he came back. You remember another one in Acts. Bible called him King Herod. Bible says, he gave not the glory to God. God said, eh, okay, let me just show you that it's all, about, it's, it's all about me. The Bible says, and the angel of the Lord smote him. And so, never get to that point. He said, and thou said in thy heart. So, you don't even need to say it to your friend or your parent. Ah, that exam, I did it well. I know it happens to many students. Somebody will ask you after the exam, how was your exam? Ah, Moshe, you know, what success? You hear people, pastors, pastoring big churches, you know, business owners, and say, ah, eh, if not for the strategy. See, your strategy will be useless minus God. Everything minus God is limited. Is, li is limited. But look at now, when they now say now, look at now verse 18. They maybe you understand. He said, but thou shall what? Remember. That when you, you must come to a point that you remember. You know, he said it is by our power and what our mind and our hand that has made us wealth. He now said, but you shall remember. So I wrote in my note that when it comes to health, there must be a remembrance of God. There must be a consciousness of God. Are we together? He said, but thou shalt remember the Lord thy God. Why will you remember him? Because he is the one that gives the power to get wealth. Is the one, not your labor, not your strategies. I'm not saying you will not, you will not, you will not put in efforts. I'm not saying you will not labor, but I'm telling you that there is a God factor. God cannot multiply vanity to produce profit. So that's why your input will be needed. I'll be teaching in the church, in, in, in the service today about the mind of Christ. You will know that one of the reasons God gave us our mind is so that you not be a dummy. Imagine your mind is not there. You don't think, you don't imagine. You just be going like, eh, just believe it like that. So you also have a contribution to make if once you are here on earth. So your contribution, when you add it to what God is doing, then you have a great result. One with God is more than majority. Stop, don't leave, don't get to that point. Don't, don't act as if you don't need God. The fact that you are brilliant, the fact that you are uh, an intellectual person, the fact that your business is booming, don't think it is by your power. Yes, there are unbelievers. Bible says even the wicked shall flourish, but their flourishing is like a flower that flourishes in the morning and the evening, he runs dry. He runs dry. Are we together? So he said, but thou shalt remember the Lord thy God, for it is he. You must know that he is the one. All the glory must be to him. He must be at the center of everything. He said, it is he that gave thee power to what? To make wealth. Why will God give you power to make wealth? Look at the next line. The reason God will give you power to make wealth is to do what? To establish his covenant, not to boast, not to show, not to booger. That's not why God is giving you power to make wealth. He's not a waster. God is giving you power to make wealth because so that he can establish his covenant. And there are four major things you will see there. Number one, you see what? Remember the Lord that God. Number two, you see what? The get power to make wealth. Number three is what is wealth. Number four is what covenant. Those four things you must keep in your heart. You must be conscious of God. So conscious of God. Number two, you must come to understand the power that produces wealth. Number three, you must understand that wealth. Because what you don't understand, you will not value. What you don't understand, you will waste. And number four, you must understand the reason for the wealth, which is what? covenant for God to establish his covenant. So today I'm going to be sharing towards greatness. That's my topic. So it's going to be our part four in this series, towards greatness, towards greatness. Jeremiah chapter 29 verse 11. 
towards greatness. I want you to, I believe you understand and you know that when God created you, he deposited a seed or the seed of greatness in you. Let me say that again. When God created you and I, everyone on the surface of the earth, what God did was that what? He deposited what? The seed of greatness in you. See, after me, God deposited the seed of greatness inside of me. He deposited it. When he created you, he made that deposit. He made that deposit. What's that deposit? Is what? The seed of greatness. What do I mean by the seed? The word seed actually talking about potentials. There are things that God has placed on your inside. There are things that God already placed on your inside. There are things that he has given to you. Why? Because he wants you to be great. It is resident in you. Somebody say after me. Say greatness. greatness. Say it again. Say greatness, greatness. is resident in me. Jeremiah 29 11 says, For I know the thought that I think towards you. I've said that several times that God doesn't think against us. He thinks towards us. Say after me. Say God doesn't think against me. But he thinks towards me. So it means that God channels thoughts to you in your direction. So God looked at Tolu and said, okay, I'm going to create someone and this person is going to function in this capacity, in this particular way to fulfill this purpose. But the end product is that your testimony should be what you ended great. In fact, you cannot, you can make up your mind to either determine to be great or to be small. So the scripture says, Say the Lord, the thought God thinks towards you is number one, thought of peace. The word peace there talks about shalom. Is the thought of peace, not to be bothered, not to be worried, nothing missing, nothing broken. Not that God will do something and he will complete the other part. No, it is a thought of peace. Number two is what is not of evil. So when evil happens to you or around you, say after me, say it is not from God. It can never be from God because God does not do evil. The thought of God. So when you see evil happening around you, what do you do? Then you look into the intention of God. Lord, what are you saying about my health? Yes, your health is under, you have been under affliction. The enemy has afflicted you, he's afflicting you. You know from that point that this cannot be God. This is the plan of the devil. Because he thought, uh, what? He thought, his number one is what? Number two, and number three, those are the three major components of God's intentions for you. Number one is peace. It's not evil. It's to give you. So God will not start with you to abandon you at the midway. Mm -mm. He's taking you to where? An expected end. There is an end that has been set, that has been, that has been ordained. The expectation of the righteous shall not be cut short. So God destined you to be great. And you must embrace that truth. It is not a fact. Write it capital letter in your note. That God destined me to be great. He wants everyone to be great in our different fields of life. No matter what you are doing, you are into fashion, you are into education, you are into politics, you are into media, whichever field of life you find yourself, what God wants you to do is that what? You'll be great. He said in Deuteronomy chapter 28, he said, I will make you the head and not the tail. He will make you the head. So why do you settle for less? Or why do people remain small? Somebody say choice. You can have a promising future, but when you don't make up your mind to live that promise, in that promise, it might not come to pass. Everyone desires greatness, but not everybody becomes great. If I ask you this morning, if you want to be great, lift your hand. Everybody, have you had someone who said, my vision in life is to fail. My vision in life is to be small. Nobody. So everyone desires greatness. Not everybody eventually becomes great. You know why? Somebody say choice. That's the reason. That's one of the major reasons. Many people are not. We all have the seed of greatness in us. You have it. I have it. Your neighbor has it. Your mother has it. But everyone must live out and allow that seed to grow. Because the seed 
somehow is not actually useful, but it's powerful. But until there is a growth process of time, when you allow time on the seed well planted, then it grows, then you can enjoy the fruit. That fruit is what we call harvest. It's what we call, it's what we call greatness. Are we together? God wants you to be great. The, your background is not a strong reason to define who you should be or who you will be. Somebody said your background does, should not put your back on the ground. That you came from a poor home does not mean that you cannot be great. I believe that you have seen even in our contemporary age, men that were nothing and they grew and they rose to become somebody. I've heard stories of people without father, without mother, who engage in principle and took responsibility and they become great. What's your excuse for not becoming great? The seed of greatness is on your inside. The seed of greatness is in you. It's in you. Remember that, that advert, that milk? It's in me. The seed of greatness is in you. And you must live your life with that consciousness. I will let me pray this prayer. Every imagination, every thought of smallness in your mindset, in your mind, in your soul, today we bring them under the obedience of Christ. Amen. Whatever that is not, whatever that is not in alignment to the will of God, you reject. God has never planned, God never said, I will be small. Check scriptures from Genesis to Revelation. God said, Abraham, for you and your children, where I will make you great. And in Romans, he said to them that are the seed of Abraham, they shall carry the same promise. You shall carry the same promise. The fact that you are not seeing it now does not mean that it won't happen. Let me tell you four things about greatness. Greatness is not just a wish, but determination. Don't, you don't just wish greatness. Ah, I shall know that one day, somebody said, if wishes to be horses, even beggars, they will ride. You don't wish greatness. What do you do? You determine. You must make that resolution. You must be resolute in your thinking, in your mind. You must make up your mind that in this particular field, I will be Great. Make it your slogan. Make it your confession. Make it your way of life. Take responsibility and become great. So after me say, my desire cannot only produce my result. Say determination. You need determination. Determination. You must be determined that in this class, I've made up my mind, I'm going to come out the best student. Somebody asked, I said, ah, pastor, I'm an average student. Who tells you an average student? Who tells you? Make up your mind. Greatness is not only, it has not only be ordained for a class of people. So your background doesn't matter in this. Don't tell me, hey, because I was born poor, because I was born in Nigeria, there are Nigerians who rose. I heard the story of the former president of Nigeria who said he had no shoe. Remember that man? He had no shoe. That's to tell you the state of his poverty. And the guy rose from nobody, and he rose to be, and he became the number one man in an entire nation. I've read stories of great men. I had, I read stories of another man called John D. Rockefeller. These are uh, great men that they did not take, not, they did not take, did not take mediocrity as a way of life. Greatness is not just a desire. Most of us, we stop at the level of desire. You desire great things. Nothing just happens. You make things happen. Nothing just, I think this, this is just, it will just happen. You are waiting for money. You think money will just fly from heaven. God will not fly from heaven. I will not tell you, my son, I've seen you where you have been praying in tongues. Take money. No, it doesn't happen. Greatness is not just a wish. So remember, you know what some of us we do? We see great people who are still pressing on, who are still making impact, who are still striving, making sacrifices, get committed, and we desire that result. We have failed to understand that there are principles, there are commitments, sacrifices, mindset, ideologies that powered that result we see how we celebrate. You now wish, I wish, I wish. Stop that nonsense. You wish what? What do you wish? You make up your mind. Determine number two, greatness is not a function of age but responsibility. You can be 60 and you are small, and you can be 15 and you are great. Greatness is not a function of age but what 
responsibility. I read the story of a young boy in the Bible called Josiah. Even at age seven, he became the king of an entire nation. Have you not read the story of Joseph? The, the story of Joseph who grew if, even all his brothers. When they couldn't come into the reality of destiny, he took up the responsibility. I've read so many stories of people that God will take from the backside of life and bring them to the forefront. It's not a function of age. You heard that people say a fool at 40. So it's not a function of age. It's not. So, so it's, if greatness will start, you will, you will come into greatness the moment you are determined. You might be determined at age 75. And some of us might be determined at age 20. How many of you, you watch this America Got Talent? Kids, young people, you see them, some of them, their names are already enlisted in the Guinness Book of Record. They started small. In fact, let me shock you. Go and check great people in so many fields of life. They started when they were small. Serena Williams and Venus Williams. Those leaders been handing racket from age five, four, with some boats. You need to check some of those great people. You will discover that it's not, it's not, it's not, it's not, it's not about age. That's why even when you are growing and raising your children, you must raise them with a consciousness of greatness and you must keep telling your son, guy, you are great. See, it is what you, what you plant in them that we manifest. Some, there were some of us, we were not, you might not be privileged to hear such, but that doesn't mean that you don't speak such to your children. Make up your mind. My children, I will not give back to children that we amount to nothing. It's a waste, it's a waste on livelihood. It's a waste on motherhood that you live and you have four children, three, and none of them made it. That's a shame on you. Somebody, does, somebody say after me, say, not, not my portion. It's not the portion. You carry your son. Tell him, son. Like they call their son. Son, you are great. Not you will be. You are what? I can't hear you. Even when he comes back from school and tells you that, mommy, I, I, we wrote exam. And um, out of 10 questions, I passed, I did two. Son, yes, I know. I still know that you are great. You are great. You keep infusing, injecting into him the word of greatness. The word of greatness. Put it in him. You are great, son. My daughter, you are great. Number four, number three, greatness is not cheap talk, but hard work. Is that what? Ah, hey, hey, great. Hey, are you great? It's not cheap talk. It is hard work. Can I say something to you? That greatness stretches people. I almost, it will stretch you. It will stretch you. And most people, they don't want that stretching. That's why you discover that it got to a point in your life, it has seen the demand is becoming too much. You are, you are, you are, in, a path, you are in a pathway to greatness. The demand is becoming too much. Let me take that again. Number one, greatness is not just a wish but determination. Number two, greatness is not a function of age but responsibility. You must take responsibility. Somebody say responsibility is your ability to respond to the ability that is in you. Responsibility. Response and ability. Response ability. There's an ability in you. When you respond to that ability, you are responsible. So you are irresponsible when the ability is there, you do nothing. There are abilities in, in, in everybody. Are we together? You know one of the abilities? Somebody say talent. Idea. is in you. Let me say this. Everything that God will do for you, he has done. <laughs> you know what I just said? He has what? Number two, everything you will need in life, he has given you. You need Jesus, he has given you. Holy Ghost, he has given you. Idea and God is in you. Greatness is in you. Talent is in you. What are you looking for? Money. Is it? I remember a particular time I was asking God, I needed money to pay rent. And I was praying, Lord, I need money. Lord, I need money. Lord, I need money. God said, look inward. I didn't understand. Because most of us, we look outward. You look at people's pockets. Hey, he's not there. He's where? He's in you. At times, you need to start by looking upward. Look up to him. And he now says, I'm looking word. God said, looking word. I have given you something that can translate to money. Say, eh. then say you have a particular gift. Say, eh. Explore that gift. Then I began to explore that gift. Converted that ability into product. Then money came. Money only flow in the direction of value. So number three, greatness is not cheap talk. It is what? See after me, say hard work. It's because it will stretch you. 
go and ask anybody that is, you know that is great today. See, one of, one of the things you must also engage are when you meet great people, you must ask them their greatness story, their success story. That, sir, how did you, even if you have read it, ask them, still ask them. Still ask them. I met a pastor yesterday in Lagos, and I was asking him, sir, I'm a pastor. I just started a church. Our church is not up to one month, and I've heard and I've seen. I know you, sir. You have been pastor of the church, and for by more than 10, 15, 20 years. Sir, what, 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 what are the principles that made you? And he said, let me give you two. And he told me, those are the things that made them. And I discovered that it is what hard work. He said, number one, almost, you must come to understand that God must call you. He said, number two, sacrifice. He said, that's what I will tell you. Sacrifice, he said, you will labor in word, in prayer, everything, labor. Greatness is not cheap talk. Some of us, we desire. You know, Nollywood has, has tampered with the way you think. Because in Nollywood film, scene one, the girl is looking, is looking for admission. Scene two, she has gotten admission. Sin three, she's married. Sin four, the house is there and children. That is not life, oh. That is movie. You are only seeing movie. When you come to the real part of life, then you will understand that it is hard work. It is hard work. It is hard. You need to engage work. If you don't put so much into, you can't come up. Because everything of value is not at the surface. It's always in the deep. You can't find gold at the surface, on the surface of the soil. You will need to do what? You will need to dig deep. That's why it is hard work. Yoruba will say that if you are going to take the honey from the rock, you will not look at what the marks, the axe head. That means that if you want to take what is inside the rock, you won't mind keep hitting that rock. Keep hitting. You will get that though. Your hand might bleed. That might be bleed. You will keep, you will keep hitting. You keep eating until you get there. Let me say that. Let me say that again. Greatness is not cheap talk. It is what? Hard work. Wake up and work hard. Wake up. Do something. Be committed. Have you read that scripture? When the Bible says, the diligent hand shall be made fat. The diligent hand, diligent hand, diligent hand shall be made fat. We have so many lazy people, but they desire greatness. You can never be great and you are lazy. There is no, see, there is nothing like greatness in the school of laziness. Sorry, there is nothing like laziness in the school of greatness. Thank you, you are following me. There is nothing like that, oh, that, ah, pastor, I will be great. It's not by mouth. It's not cheap talk. It is hard work. How many of you want to be great? Do you answer me? What you need is what? Hard work. Stop saying it. Move out from saying it. Yeah, I know. Greatness is not cheap talk. Oh. You see people. See, all those celebrities you see is... <coughs> Yoruba will say that the bottom of wealth has... <laughs> Serious work. You see somebody today doing fine. You just have to ah, see that dream. Even those that are doing money ritual, they will tell you that it is hard work. You don't know. Hard work. Go and ask them. I've not done it before, so I don't know. Hard work. Hard work. I, I, I read the story of a young guy on Facebook who the Babala who said we need to be bathing at Beria can you Can you do that on a normal day to be bathing at Beria at 1 a.m.? And they don't say you go and kill. Even some of you, ordinary rats, enter, you cannot kill. You don't say you should kill your neighbor. And you know why I love? It starts to tell you that there is nothing of greatness without sacrificial tag. You will need to pay a sacrifice. Godly, demonic, whichever way, even natural. Have you seen a student that just said, I, do, I know this semester I will pass. And he slept. Or she, she just kept sleeping. An exam, she slept from day one of admission and woke up on the day of exam. Bring the question. That's a definition of failure. Let me say the scripture says, it said greatness, success, has many friends. The failure. Who wants to associate with failure? That's why it is hard work. Somebody asked a man, he said, what does it take, what does it take to fail? 
He said, the only thing it takes to fail, someone said nothing. What does it take to succeed? Say everything. Don't do anything. You will fail. It's not, you don't need prayer to fail. Lord, let me fail. You don't need prayer to fail. Just do nothing. Wake up in the morning. Just sit down. Be browsing. Don't go to work or don't look for a job. Don't do anything. See, poverty will pounce on you. Like a man on a journey. You know I showed that scripture last Sunday. Many people, they are actually lazy. Give them a job. How can I be collecting 50,000 euros? Five to eight. When you know that, why can't you start your own company? Greatness is not cheap talk. It is what? Hard work. That's what so I in Thomas in prison, but you will walk. You will sit down. You know why we have so many lazy politicians? They are not ready to give in for the work. They are not ready to give in for the work. Some of you, even when you are in school, you are writing projects, you now be complaining. Ah, that's why it's stressing me. He, those things, they need to introduce that to you. So you're expecting to get to school. I, I don't know how they are running school now. When I went to school, University of Abekuta. There was nothing like online registration. You will carry file. We will line up. Hours. Hours. When we are done, we will not go and come. We first go to bank. Not the, we do, there was nothing like transfer. I'm talking about 2004, 2001. There was nothing like transfer. We will go to the bank. Where my, some, of our, some of those banks are now closed down. We will go to the bank, we will line up, sign deposit slip, pay. We will now go back to school to convert slip to receipt. You will even be on the queue. We will now take receipt to go and collect fine. From fine, we will now go to exams and record. We will now come out, we will now go and do our medic. Ah, ah, hard life. That's why I'm like this. You see all this butter they are, they are carrying today? A guy was reporting a lady to me, let's say in Lagos. He said, Pastor, what am I going to do? I said, what happened? He said, I went to watch He said, the lady I married went to private school and she does not know how to cook in the I said, it's a lie. He said, pastor. <laughs> pastor. He said, you know her. I said, call her, ask her. Hello. How are you? Hope you are fine. Then I used all those strategies. I just spoke. We discovered that she doesn't know how to, how to cook. Hard life. Don't run away from training. You know, training is not easy. Ah, it can be. It shouldn't be easy. All of us, we want what we call software. But you are free to understand that there is hardware. Those are the two parts of life. Hardware, software. You like software. Oh, iPhone, eyelashes, iPencil, eyelander. Which other one? Eye madness. Eye is. You know that. You even need strength to use that. To... <laughs> one day, I won one of my wife's shoes. <laughs> I said, you people are trying, you know. I celebrate you. I celebrate grace. Everything, you know. Some people, they are pack up. They will now go to school. They will now transform. Ouch. <laughs> what I do? Yay! I know and say me. You are not, some of you, you are not soft. There is nothing soft about you. Everything is hard. hard, hard. Somebody said, Bishop, he told Bishop Abiyu, he said, stop taking, he said, life is not that easy. He said, life is not that hard. Take it. Shut up! He said, see your life, see my life. You have been taking life easy. See how your life is. I've been taking hard life, see my life. It's better I go on this path. Nothing is cheap on earth. Greatness is not chess. Remember that song? Everything written about me. It's not only God, even you. Is what? I can't hear you. Is what? I can't hear you. Everything written about me. Is great. So why will you choose to live a small life? See, one of the things you must erase from your mind, from your head, is this small mentality. Erase it. Small what? Ah, let me, ah, ah, it's okay. Hey, this, this, I'm okay like this. Oh, hey, let me just be like this. Oh, me, if I say Juramilo, you can never be great like that. God will never create a man without a plan. The plan of God for you is that Jeremiah 29, 11. It's of good and not of evil. You know he's the master planner. Then he can't plan what is, what is below his personality. He's great. Someone say, I'm great. I can't hear you. God doesn't create non-entities. He created greatness. Or he created 
greatness. Let me tell you six things about greatness. Greatness, number one, requires awareness. Greatness requires what? Awareness that produces knowledge by revelation. Right like that. Awareness that produces knowledge by what? I'm going to explain. You must, there is, a, there is an awareness you must come into that comes by what? Say revelation. And what revelation does is to what? To give you what? Knowledge. You must know that you are what? You must know. And that knowledge comes by what? Revelation. That's the awareness. So the first thing God did to Joseph was to give him what? A dream. The essence of that dream is to bring him to the consciousness that guy, you are going to be great too. He showed him the first dream, showed him the second dream. You need that awareness. You need that awareness. That awareness is being sponsored by what? Somebody say revelation. revelation. You come into revelation, you know that this is what God has said about you. Revelation. Either dream, trance, vision, whichever one. But you come into revelation and it will, you, will come to, you will just know that I'm going to be great. Because you cannot become who you don't know or what you don't know. You can't. It's not possible. You can't. You can't get to a place you don't know. Yes or no? So look, can you take me to my house? Why? You don't know the place. You don't know the way. So what you don't know, you can't become. So the first thing that God will do is to what? To bring you to the what? To the consciousness. To bring an awareness. To bring the knowledge and they start dealing with you. That's why some of you at times I might need, need to pray that Father, open my eyes that I may know. Open my eyes. Number two, you, number one, you need what? Awareness or knowledge. Number two, what do you need? You need determination that produces right, right, right choices. Number one, you need what? Please talk to me. You need what? You need what? You must know. You must know. You can't be great without knowledge. You can't be great without that awareness. And number two, you need determination that produces right words, right choices. You must determine that come out way in my father's house, nobody's great. I have made up my mind that I will be determination. And that determination must sponsor some choices. It will make you to do certain things. You have read Daniel chapter 1 verse 8. Bob says, and Daniel proposed in his heart. He determined that I'm not going to despise myself. I'm not going to destroy myself with the king's meat. For me, he said, I've given you life and what? I've placed before you life and death. It says what? Choose life that you may live. Choose life. It's your decision. Everybody desires greatness, but not everybody becomes great. What, why? Our choices. We make different choices. What you do is not what I do. What I do is not what you do. What you do with your 24 hours is not what I do with my 24 hours. Determination. And when you are determined, it must not just end at that. Your determination must move you to start making some choices that I've made up my mind that I'm not going to remain small. What may remain small? My dad used to sleep seven hours a day. Me, I won't sleep. You know some of you, you, you the you way your parents sleep is as if they're in a sleeping competition. There's no reward for sleepers. Determination that produces right what? Right choices. That you can make some choices and those choices as a result of determination you have made. I will not give my eyes to... I was in Lagos yesterday and I was writing things I will be doing every day. Number one, I will be writing every day. Two, I will be reading decisions that must be... that must birth choices. Number three, commitment to a pattern of life that produces action. You know, choice is different from action. Action is the doing. Choice is the decision. So what, so you must make up, you must build, you must create a commitment that we, that we pattern your life, which produces what? Action. So what powers action? Someone say commitment. Yeah, you must be committed. That I've said I will be, I'm good. Bishop Edeko said when he was to start university, when he was to start his university, maybe I think Covenant University, he said he made up his mind. It was not God that told him he said he needed to go and read autobiographies of great universities. That's a commitment. Commitment. You must make up your like, KG. She's actually working hard. 
to make herself great. What are you doing? Especially some of the guys, they love watching football. I love football. I'm not saying it's bad. But how can you sit down behind a TV watching 90 minutes of a guy expressing his gift? When we men watch you for 90 minutes, you know those 90 minutes? Those guys are heavily paid. Hope, hope you know. They are heavily paid. You see young boys at the junction on Monday morning. Monday, since you are not, the guy that lost penalty, that lost penalty that you are abusing has collected his paycheck. But the guy is drinking. He's, in, he's inside AC. You, you are in the sun. 9 a.m. You are shouting. You are losing your voice, losing your, your sense. Commitment to a pattern of life. See, when you meet great people, you need to ask them what are their dailies. You know what I call dailies? Things they do every day. What do they do? One of, I met a pastor yesterday. He said, when I wake up in the morning, the first thing I do after I'm done with praying is I do my today list. How many of you do today list? In 7 a.m., I'm writing. Ah, I told the man. <laughs> when the man was speaking, that was what gave back to this, what I'm sharing. Now. When the man was speaking, I said, hmm, some of us, we are too far from greatness. He said, I will wake up and do my today list. I'm going to go out seven to nine. I'm going to pray five to six. That's when you are deliberate about life. Not that we are just living life. Because, yeah. And somebody just came in. Kaka Kwa Enterprises. Hey, boy, I'm fine. Let's go and watch a movie. Let's go. Or oh, Monday morning, you are watching a movie. It's a matter of time. Don't worry. <laughs> See, the day, day of today, they might eventually end up at Dia Dia tomorrow. They will suffer. The price today. Pay the price. P R I C E today. So you can get the P R I Z E tomorrow. Pay the price. Pay today. Today. Go and ask some of your parents that didn't buy land 10 years ago. Tell them to go and buy land now. Go and ask them. Mommy was telling me two or three days ago how she bought land many years ago. You know how much they sold those land? I think my dad bought my dad bought his land 3,000 naira in 1990 something. At that place down, they sell land for 15 million, 20 million. Some people got that. Now ask him how he paid that at 3,000 naira. It was not easy. It was not easy. But you know, he has made too that they were chopping life. Some of you, you don't need iPhone now. You don't need iPhone now. Don't let me go there. They are passing like I only and iPhone. No? Don't. <laughs> Your life is according to the book, which is great. And you must live accordance to that. Number one is what? Awareness or knowledge. By what? Revelation. Number two is what? Determination that produces what? Number three is what? Commitment to a pattern of life that produces what? Action. Nobody becomes great without action. You must do something. Joshua 1 8, he said, This book of law should not depart of your mouth. That shall make it therein and observe to do according uh, do you must do you must do you don't just write down do give me james 1 21 i've quoted that scripture do nothing just i've said that before nothing just happened james 1 said we are for lay apart every filthiness nothingness and receive the meekness the engrafted word of god which is able to save your soul verse 22 bible says but be ye do us, do us, do us, be ye do us, and not what he has only. Don't just keep hearing, do why? Because the blessing is not in doing. Bible says, deceiving your own. So, a deceiver is someone who hears and doesn't do. A deceiver, yes, he doesn't do. Look at verse 23. Bible says, For if any be a hearer of the word and not a doer, he is like a man beholding a what? What happens at the end of the day in a glass? Oh, my God, baby. Look at verse 24. Bible 24 says, For he builded himself and go this way and straight away forget what man now. That's the same thing that happened. Do. I'm telling you, do something. Don't just be found doing nothing. Greatness is not found in the hands of someone that is idle. Greatness is found in the hands of men that do something. Mention any great man today and I will tell you what they do. So what are you doing? What are you doing? Laziness is not an option. I do not an option. Bible says, seek it thou a man. Diligent in his what? In his what? In his what? 
He didn't say doing business. So because of you are doing business, you are not doing diligently. He said, he shall not stand before me, man. And when you are last, son, they will stand before the great people. A diligent man. You have the shop and you are still at home 9 a.m. Something is actually wrong with you. Oh, Thank you, my daughter. Tell them. Number four. Number one is awareness that produces knowledge. Wake. You know, I said that son, last week, Sunday morning. Wake up. Roll your sleeves and jump on the road. Do something. Do something. Do something. Stop talking. Talk is cheap. Anybody can talk. You know, the kind of house I'm going to build, I'm going to build it on 75 plot of land. My sitting room is going to face like this. My kitchen will be like this. My, my bedroom is underground. It's cheap. Start. You know what they call the ground? You are gone. <laughs> Commit, be committed to a pattern of life that we. My wife was teaching that to. Where's the? That they, we know that. Ah, ah, conferences. You don't attend seminars. You say, no. Now so number four. Number one is awareness to what those need. Number two, determination. Number three, commitment. Number four, discipline. Be disciplined. That's the price for greatness. You know, failure has a price tag too. <laughs> All right. You don't see everything. Ah, I saw them. I saw them. I saw them. I saw them. You just talk. Some of you, you have no gate. Anything. You, um, have, you, have you come to us? Pastor, have you eaten? <clears throat> Discipline. People are saying that you should do here. You know you are a foolish boy. Hey, me! Hey, you are a foolish boy. That's why you have to respond. The reason you responded, imagine you are walking on the road and someone says, Where? Where? And I say, Me. Ah, what does it mean? <laughs> you be, become what you answer to. What do you hear? When that woman was so angry, shut the door. There are people you shut your you don't hear them because they can bring discovery. See, you are friends. I've, read, I, I've said that in my one of my some of my books. See, your friends will do four things to you. They will either add to you, surprise from you, them. They will add to you. You just said, I want to be selling donuts. I know it's only donuts. Oh. You will also sell drinks. They have done what added to your vision. So proud from you. I want to be selling donuts. Don't know until later. <clears throat> they will tell you this is what said. You know, in, at the end of the day, you make profit of seven thousand. Remove flour, five thousand flour. Those are no friends. Those are lying, Mohammed. You understand what I'm saying? There are some friends. They what? They multiply you. Tell them, I'm planning to start up. I'm, I'm, I'm planning to be selling pop off. Ah. At this level, no, eh? you, are, you, are, you are going to buy a shopping mall. You are going to have fries. You will regret walking to them. Eh? <laughs> <bad> vision. <laughs> so, when, when Goliath was to be killed, what was the time? Ah, seven minutes. <laughs> Second point. Oh, no, gee. I'm going to extend this life class. It's going to be 8 to 10. Very soon. Not today. Not today. 8 to 10. When David got to the battlefront, and people, he, he walked away from some of them. They were saying, hey, that, he, he walked away. That things you must not hear. Make up your mind. Anything that is not, that any news of failure, I will not hear. Impossibility, I will not hear. You are with that person. Is in jet that we cripple your ability. Somebody say discipline. Number five, take responsibility and give no excuses. You want to be great? You must take what? And give no what? No excuse. It's because of where I am. is a lie. It's because there's nobody to help me. is a lie. It's because I have no father. is a lie. The lady was sharing online. He said the reason she didn't go to school you know, was that you know, she was actually angry. Go and check her people that are always angry with life. He said, eh, nobody, I have no father. Eh, my mother died. Then my daddy went away. 
in my mind. I said, I know a boy. He lived with me. Ask my wife. The guy lived with us. He lost his father, lost his mother. Martin's single and deadly. The only thing the guy knows how to do is to repair phone and laptop. Just by doing that, Martin's single finished. You have no excuse. He will be sending message to you. My friend, I, I, my friend, I, I, his brother sent him shoe. Sent Stop making excuses. I said that before. I said excuses will squeeze you out of use. Excuse. When X here, you'll be X in use. Oh, the Wuluma. Go and check people that make excuses. Why do you come late? It's because I understand. But I don't want to accept it. Why is my life like this? Be more shady, shady, eh? Don't say, eh? There are five reasons why my life is like this. Number one, my dad was not caring. Number two, my mom doesn't have our time. Number three, I went to public school. Number four, my boyfriend left me. He will leave you. Number five, I have no destiny. Numbers. So in Kenshie, oh, you are writing a book of failure. You don't make excuses. Stop it. Kill the seed of excuses in your life. That I will take responsibility for whatever happens to me. I will take it to why is this just small? It's not your fault. It's my fault. That's why I will be angry at certain things. Though. Why? Because I will take responsibility. He that is faithful in little shall receive what is what. God will commit that which is much into his hands. Stop making excuses. Finally, on that, you must be received. You, they can't change your mind. But on this part, you can't you can stop me. That I have fixed my eyes on this course. I won't turn until I've got, I get there. I won't stop. Oh, discouragement, you are still present. Paul said, this one thing I do. I'm, I'm moving. I subscribe. I, in this, I subscribe. You know some people are making it. You don't know. Student. <laughs> my friend, my wife be started up a program for students to learn Forex. I was in Lagos. I saw students on Asus Strike that were there and they were learning how to trade. He was telling me two nights ago. He said, Pastor, eh, in this Asus Strike, there are many students even in this Asus they do nothing. I press Philippians 3, 14. I press. Someone say, I press. It's not easy. You are just that against all odds, you are seeing me, you are moving. Think discouragement, you are moving. As long as they told that your mommy was he said, mommy, you care and you are still moving. You are sick yourself. Only for, you are still take care. You don't take care. You take care. They only take care of the house owned by someone. Someone say, I take charge. That's what, that's what you are seeing, not what you are now. Who you are now is not really where you are going to. If you told Lonnie, it's where you are going. You are not, you are not, you might see, you don't need to like me. I know where I'm going to. You don't need to like the church now. I'm not joking. No, don't like it now. It's the matter of time. Go and check great people. I've learned to start small, but I'm not going to. It's, it is good to start small, but it's bad to remain small. My short, my only, I'm my only, but I'm doing well to. Go and ask them when they married your father. They married them in one room. My father-in-law went to Lagos with one box. <laughs> that man, eh? he said, I went to Lagos. I always remember that story. One box. Before that man left Lagos, he left houses there. He, yes. He, he went to Lagos. He went small, but he didn't return small. When he was leaving Lagos after many years, he built a house. The house is still there. Bless the school. When he, he gave that school out to somebody. Not because he needed money. You understand what I'm saying? Greatness must be found in you. I, I might start small. I'm not, I'm not resilient. Against what happens, oh, no food, I will keep pressing. I keep pressing. No money in my pocket, I keep moving. 
I will keep, I will keep going until I get there. Go and read the story of great people. I read the story of the man that invented the fluorescent bulb. I was told that he tried 999 times and he failed. It's good to fail. It is all you do to fail that determines who you are. Imagine you trying one thing. You trying one thing. First time it failed. Second time it failed. Will you continue? Second time. Third time. Tenth time. Hundredth time. Five hundred time. The guy kept trying. One thousand time. Then the thing worked. Be resilient. Be re make up your mind. Sorry, digression. Odekini, Olule. Bose Lule, ma dide. Odeketa, Olule. Wo! Ebe look. Don't say, Ekini, Bose Lule. That's why I love the new governor of my state. First one, Olule. The guy stood up. He did one manifesto that I love. He said, if they are giving you money, I have brought money in dollars. Must be a second time. They reject you from that job. You go back there. What are you talking about? Go home and tell them, mommy. I said I don't like you before, but me. Mommy, give me five years. I want to build you a solid three-bedroom flat. How will it happen? Don't worry. Let me go. See, there are some people you must leave them now. If you don't leave them, eh? <laughs> See, emotion has killed many people. There are people you need to leave them. See, when you become great, you know what you are doing. Just keep pressing. By the time you hit it, you go, ah, you ah, ah, me never no. Ah, mo my poma do mo my mashuri re mo mo ah, long me. Scamaru. <laughs> 903. Oh, now. Let's go. Uh -huh, sorry. Okay, no. So, God gives us the power to get wealth. Praise God. So, today, I want you to open your heart and make up your mind that you will be great. I would love to talk about the prizes of greatness, but because of our time, I want us to, I want you to, I want you to lift your voice and make this declaration after me. Say everything written about me. Say well, say everything written about me is great. Say I made up my mind that I will be great. Say everything I will do will be intentional. Say, I am conscious of greatness. Say, greatness is my birthright, is my responsibility. Say, I make decision today that I will be committed to greatness. Nothing will reduce me. Say, after I'm saying, I reject every system or but my later shall greatly increase. So, Richard, amen. amen. How many of you believe that word? All right, come on, celebrate God this morning. So, we're starting service.